Well, hello, everyone. Today I was messing around with the chaos. It's X-A-O-C, and I'm pretty sure they meant that to spell chaos. Uh, Dresno, which is their analog to digital, digital to analog converter. Um, I'm sending it a clock. That's just the square, the comparator output of Bastel Dresden, uh, Tromso. And as its data input, it's receiving this triangle LFO. And so every time it receives a clock pulse, <clears throat> it translates the incoming voltage into an 8-bit digital value and each of those eight bits is available as a gate on the other side which I'm not using um, you can send eight gates in and it will translate that into an analog voltage coming out this jack and the two sections can be independently clocked this blue button right here is the link when that light is on the signal from the input side goes across to the output side but you can interrupt it by patching things into those jacks you can mess with the signal you can do bit crushing and these kinds of things with it I thought at first it would work as a sample and hold but because of the nature of the of what it does it's not a precision sample and hold so you can't use it to like relay pitch voltages out of a running sequence to have a slower moving part so I'm using these gates as you'll notice if you've been watching the little lights uh, these ones down here change a lot faster than the ones up here so the quicker ones I'm using to trigger, T-kick, snare, the open and closed of hat. Although for the open, I'm actually sending one of those gates here into branches to do a probabilistic split so that the open sound doesn't happen quite as often. The other half of that branch I am sending yeah, over here to divide and conquer, slow it down even more. One of those gates is triggering the E950, which I have uttering random words. Then another of those gates I am using to clock the 4R, which is randomizing the word selection in the E950 as well as the playback speed and whether it's glitched or not. Now then I'm sending three of the slower moving gates down here to Rebel Technology Tonic which is a handy dandy sequencer that converts gates into CV but each gate represents a specific pitch interval so it's more musically useful than the uh, digital to analog converter in the Dresno and I had initially thought to send that signal out to the quantizer but I discovered today that the duo Q it's very dirty um, the quantized voltages that it outputs are they're not clean they're sort of wiggly and the trick that I wanted to do with the sample and holds where you pick notes out of the sequence and hold them I could not get the two parts to be in tune with each other 
because of the imprecision of the duo Q outputs. So that's why I'm using tonic. It made the patch a little more complicated. Um, I'm molting this clock and one copy of it is going into the top branch and that is triggering rings as well as triggering this sample and hold which is sampling the output from tonic that's going into this buffered molt and then at my second output I'm sampling at a different speed which is uh, one of these divide and conquer divisions and I'm using that same trigger to trigger plats which is playing the bass part and so the the same trigger that's triggering it is also clocking the sample and hold to get the pitch CV that it needs for the note that it's playing and so both parts are running off the same sequence and you can hear that right now because the LFO is running slow if I change the rate of the LFO it will make this patch get busier listen I think I, I did a variation on that technique way back when I first got Dresno, but I haven't, uh, I haven't done anything else with it since then. So I, I dusted off that idea, thought I was gonna implement it a little bit differently, but uh, that's, that's a disappointing discovery about this quantizer. Anyway, um, thanks to my patrons for financing this whole thing. And thanks to y'all on YouTube for watching. I'll catch you all later.